Welcome everyone. My name is Romain, and in this video, I will present to you the time-triggered wireless architecture, a work that aims to design real-time cyber-physical systems. Nowadays, when we think about cyber-physical system, we start envisioning applications with ever more challenging requirements. However, uh, as researchers, we like to work with simpler yet representative examples of such applications, one of which is the stabilization of an inverted pendulum which is a rather simple mechanical systems where we aim to stabilize a pole in an upright position under a cab that can move left and right. This is a reasonably well understood problem, however, it does get significantly more challenging when we start separating the physical system we are trying to control from the places where we compute the actuation commands. In particular, this is uh, very challenging when the communication between those two parts has to happen across a multi-hop wireless network which is what we are interested in doing in this project. When we talk about applications, we are actually thinking of sets of distributed tasks. For example, we could have a number of pendulums, which angle we can measure at runtime, provide this information to a controller that will compute the corresponding actuation command to send back to the pendulum in order to uh, stabilize them. And it is important to understand that the application is what defines the requirement on the system design. In this case, we are interested in predictability, adaptability, both in terms of changing in the traffic patterns, but also in terms of mobility of the independent node in the network. And all that should happen reasonably efficiently in terms of latency and energy consumption. One thing I would like to stress at this point is that uh, in terms of predictability, we are actually interested in end-to-end in -end real time guarantees. What this means is that if we look back uh, at our application, of course, we have to meet deadlines for each uh, messages and, and tasks. But what really matters in the end is the end to end deadline across the entire application, which is defined as the time elapsed between the start uh, and the end of the first and last task, respectively. So the goal of this project is really that, to try to provide a complete architecture that can provide this concept of end-to-end uh, -end predictability while remaining reasonably adaptive and efficient. So in this uh, small video, you can see an example of what we've managed to achieve. So uh, in this experiment, we have two pendulums on one side of the network and a controller on the other side of it. And we can, what you can see is that we managed to successfully stabilize those pendulums. Actually, we can even guarantee the stability of the pendulums despite their control happening across a multi-hop network. Furthermore, we can actually grab this controller and start moving around in the network. Now, if you look carefully on the top right video, you actually don't really see any significant difference on the stability of the, of the pendulum. And actually, the controller mobility has no impact whatsoever on the application performance. And this is a property of the system we have designed, which we call time-triggered wireless, or TTW for short. TTW is a design made of essentially two main components, a real-time scheduler that provides uh, scheduling tables computed offline that are being run by our network stack, which we call TTNet. About this TTNet stack, the one thing which is really key to understand is that we try to leverage a wireless communication technique, which is called synchronous transmissions. In a nutshell, this technique allows us to uh, um, perform very efficient multi-hop broadcast in our network based on a floating strategy. And that down the, down the road, that what this enables us to do is to abstract away the complexity of the multi-hop network and, and see everything as if the network was in fact a shared bus. This is extremely powerful because a shared bus is something which is much, much simpler to schedule than a multi-hop network. And so the idea is that actually this multi-hop uh, floating process can be seen as far as the scheduler is concerned by simply a box, a time slot. And we can combine those time slots and have a succession of them and where each time slot is being assigned one single node for communication. Furthermore, in a wireless context, we like to bundle those slots together in so-called rounds. The idea is, is that communication happens within those rounds, and in between, we want to turn off the radios completely in order to save significant amount of energy. Finally, we need to have one single node that acts as coordinator of the runtime operation, 
And this node we call the host in TTW. So to summarize on the TTNet, uh, the key thing to take away is that the use of this technique called synchronous transmission allows us to abstract away the complexity of multi-hop communication and schedule everything as if the network was in fact a shared bus. This is a very interesting property that we'll try to uh, leverage in our real-time scheduler. As I mentioned in the introduction, the scheduler is responsible for providing end-to-end -end real time guarantees at the application level. The question is, with what type of applications are we talking about here? In TTW, uh, the applications we are considering are strictly periodic. And by that, I mean that the tasks that are part of each application execute strictly periodically. The reason being that it is actually extremely beneficial to have no or negligible jitter on the execution of tasks as far as the controller is concerned. So we aim to provide that in the system design. Furthermore, the applications have arbitrary deadlines. So I mean, the deadlines is currently encoded to the application period. The task and messages inherit their period from uh, their applications. And finally, TTW supports what we call persistent applications, which are applications that should remain completely undisturbed by any other changing happening in the network. That would be, for example, the start of the termination of some other applications. So if we forget about the task for a second and we focus uh, for a moment on uh, the scheduling of the messages, right? We've, said, we've said that thanks to synchronous transmission, we can see the network as a single shared resource. So it's rather simple to schedule. Uh, we have our messages, release time and deadlines. We can then uh, define the right moment to schedule rounds and do the assignment to uh, minimize resource utilization. Well, that sounds very nice, but there is actually a catch that it is not so trivial to know when the release times and deadlines actually are. The reason being that this information actually comes from the scheduling of the tasks, right? Remember that uh, when we look at the entire application, what matters is the end to end deadline. That is the deadline set by the, ex the latency of um, the, the start and end task in our application. And so it's only once we have those uh, tasks defined that we obtain our uh, network release time and deadlines, and therefore we can schedule the network. The takeaway being that in order to provide end to end guarantees at the application level, we need some sort of coupling between the schedules of the task and the schedules of the messages. This can be done in several ways, and the, the choice we made in TTW design is to do a static co-scheduling, uh, which is an approach uh, well known and used in the, a lot in the wired domain. So the, the approach is very similar here. Uh, we used uh, we compute the schedules offline based on a mixed integer linear program uh, that synthesize a scheduling table that we can then run, uh, execute at runtime. Now, the one important difference between prior works in, in wired domain is that in the wireless design, we use this concept of rounds, uh, which creates additional constraint that needs to be uh, satisfied. Things like that a message must be served in a round that will finish before the message deadline. Now, if you think about how you would implement this in a milk formulation, you will have a constraint that looks something like this. The deadline of a message i should be larger than the uh, start time of a round j plus the execution time of that round. However, this should only hold true if and when the message i is assigned to the round j. The problem here is that both the start time of the round and the assignments are variable of our problem. Therefore, such constraint is nonlinear and cannot be embedded in a MILP. So the workaround we propose is inspired by network calculus whereby we introduced a function that counts the number of message jobs that are really served and have passed that deadline for every message. And the, tr the interesting aspect of this is that we can use those functions to reformulate the uh, constraint we have. And those functions have expressions uh, that are nice enough so that we can embed them in MILP uh, using common tricks. So the static schedule uh, provides nice properties, but it is inherently static, right? We have static uh, scheduling tables. So it's not great for an adaptability point of view with respect to changes in traffic demands. In the literature, uh, this limitation is uh, typically handled by uh, adding the support for multiple operation modes. A mode can be thought of as a set of applications that are supposed to run concurrently. 
So uh, we Im embed also this this uh, this aspect in TTW, um, le letting the system switch between modes at runtime. Uh, one uh, specific complexity here is that because we want to have per, um, uh, persistent applications, uh, that creates dependencies between the schedule of the different modes uh, that need to be handled slightly carefully. But we found ways of doing this in a reasonable fashion. So to summarize on the scheduling part, uh, the key idea is that we use a static co-scheduling approach to provide end-to-end -end guarantees so at, at the application level. To maintain a certain level of adaptability, uh, we support a, a mode change um, at runtime of the entire system. And to compute the scheduling table, the scheduler actually requires a certain number of um, parameters, as well as a model of the TTNet implementation. Now, all that is great, but one could ask, and it's a reasonable question to ask, whether we can actually implement this. Is it feasible to have an implementation that will match the requirements of the scheduler? In particular, uh, whether the assumption of the scheduler in terms of worst case execution time of the task and the messages can really be fulfilled. As I mentioned in the introduction, we have implemented TTNet on real unhabited hardware. And this, we've used for that a software framework called Balu, which, among other things, provide us with a very precise model of the execution time of the rounds. So that is exactly the model uh, that I was referring to earlier. Now the question is, how do we actually validate this model? In particular, how do we validate that the worst case execution time of our messages will indeed be smaller than the value given by the model? This is generally not something easy to validate experimentally. The approach we propose is based on confidence interval, which is a statistical approach that allows to estimate the value of an unknown parameter. So if I say, for example, that AB is a 95% confidence interval for the median of a variable X, it means that the probability that the true median of the variable X, which is something I do not know, uh, is between A and B with a probability at least as large as 95%. Now the nice thing is that there exists a statistical method that uh, allows us to compute those confidence interval. And furthermore, we can derive the minimal number of samples of experiment that are required to do this estimation. If we want to estimate the median with a confidence level of 95%, this is rather easy, but we're not interested in the median. We're interested in the worst case execution time, which is like the 100th percentile. But the higher the percentile, the more challenging it is to actually provide a confident estimate. So in our case, we, uh, we settle for a middle ground for the validation of the TTNet model by trying to confidently estimate the 95th percentile. So we've run the math and it gives us the number of experiments we need to run. We did that. And this is a sample of the experiment we, we've collected. You can see here the distribution of uh, samples uh, of measurements taken by all the nodes in the network. Uh, the dashed line represents the maximal value ever measured for the round by any node. And the solid line represents uh, the model value. You can, so you can see two things. First, the model provides both uh, a safe and reasonably tight upper bound for uh, the maximal value ever measured. And naturally, this applies to a wide range of parameters, actually all the parameters we've tested. Based on this experimental data, what we can claim is that we can predict that the worst case execution time of any round will indeed be smaller than the model value in at least 95% of the runs, and that will hold with a probability of 95%. That is the type of claim we can make, the base claim we can make actually based on the data we've collected. So to summarize, I've presented uh, the time triggered wireless architecture, which is a system design for real time cyber physical system, composed on two main components a uh, real time um, a network stack based on synchronous transmission that allows us to abstract the complexity of the multi hop network, a real time scheduler that provides end to end deadline by using static uh, co scheduling approach. And finally, we've shown that uh, we can indeed implement this network stack in a way that matches the assumptions of the scheduler. At this point, I would like to mention that all the data, code, and uh, processing script are all publicly available. So if you are interested in seeing and learning more about how we can provide end-to-end real-time guarantees in cyber physical system based on a wireless technology, I invite you to go and check out the project webpage ttw.eth.ch. Thank you.